Good evening. Tonight uh, I'm going to be presenting on a, uh, a project called Project Atomic. It's brought to you by our good friends at Red Hat. And um, one of the most important aspects of it is immutability. So as an operating system, it's supposed to be stable and incorruptible, and it's meant to, uh, well, be a good foundation and not a problem. So let's see if we can move on. OK. And we're getting pretty good justification, I guess. Hope the words stay on the screen. Um, the whole idea behind it is that it is based on uh, OS tree, which is a, it's like Git. Um, it replaces both the um, uh, distribution focus and also the package management focus. And it basically works like Git. It's got all the signatures and the hashing, but it is set up as read only. So essentially, once um, a uh, project atomic distribution is published, it doesn't change. Um, that is the core of what makes Pro Project Atomic important. There's a lot around it uh, that gets involved. And let's go back to this. Um, it's a host OS for containers. So this is like Rancher OS or um, uh, Ubuntu Core or uh, Core OS. It's meant to be a uh, very uh, low-level foundation on which uh, everything you do uh, is otherwise is in a container. And so um, that is the primary focus of it. Um, uh, Ubuntu Core has a, a additional focus in uh, IoT, but um, it's uh, essentially made uh, to manage uh, containers, Docker containers, Rocket containers, and um, uh, LXC, I believe. Um, it's uh, standard uh, compliant, uh, CNI compliant. Anyways, um, it's made to work with the uh, Fedora uh, Kubernetes uh, front end. Uh, this ships with Fedora, CentOS, Red Hat. It's called Cockpit. And essentially, it gives you a visual way to manage containers on uh, any Kubernetes compliant uh, deployment. So uh, for example, you can use it uh, with uh, Google Cloud. You can use it with uh, containers on uh, AWS. You can use it with um, Project Atomic on your own hardware if you want and get a unified view of where all your containers are deployed. Um, a, the Project Atomic is uh, set up to handle this because the operating system, uh, besides being a uh, Fedora or CentOS or Red Hat kernel, includes the uh, Docker, uh, Flannel, uh, etcd, and Kubernetes uh, tools built in. And essentially, uh, that's how it's made to uh, interact and be managed. And, um, it comes in three major flavors. Like I said, there's Fedora upstream, Red Hat, and CentOS downstream. I don't know how you guys feel about the characterization of upstream and downstream, but that seems to be how Red Hat thinks about them. And um, either way, it's available in all of them, and it works the same in, uh, in them. And uh, essentially, it's um, a unified approach to uh, all three. Uh, distributions. Um, its deployment is quite flexible. Um, you can uh, put an ISO on a USB stick and plug it into a computer, boot it up and load it up with an Anaconda. Um, uh, that'd be for uh, bare metal. There's a, a QCOW2 uh, image that is uh, published so that you can uh, just pop it into a virtualization uh, management tool that you're already using. Um, also, it's available for um, uh, AWS. There's an AMI version. Um, there's a Vagrant version. Uh, there's a DigitalOcean droplets. Um, I would suspect you might be able to find it on 
most uh, DPS services. Um, and uh, so it, it can show up in a variety of ways. Um, the last one there you may not uh, have noticed, but there is a Pixie Boot uh, image that uh, comes with a Kickstarter. So if you are um, using Cobbler and uh, deploying uh, fresh hardware, um, you can set it up and have it uh, just deploy it out straight away. Uh, the promise is with, a little, with as little interaction as possible. Um, okay, now the whole vision, this is part of a vision. It's uh, been going on for a couple years now. Um, and uh, this is sort of sets out the vision of uh, a project. It's meant to sort of undertake a variety of, uh, of uh, functions. For example, it uh, is involved in uh, configuring and building out uh, uh, Docker images and a variety of other things. Um, the whole idea is that uh, it's essentially going to provide a stable, immutable operating system on which you can run your containers. And um, so it's, uh, it's signed. It's, uh, it's basically uh, the vision is to have a, an immutable and signed operating system from the containers all the way out to the FE boot. Uh, so that you can guarantee that everything is as you think it is on your systems. Um, and uh, there are some other ex aspects. This has uh, grown out of what Red Hat was doing in terms of developing a modular operating system uh, approach. Um, uh, in the latest uh, um, distribution, Fedora 27, on the server side, you're starting to see um, some results with uh, modular services uh, being proposed using Voltron to, to um, uh, essentially augment the uh, Fedora server distribution. And so it, it's moving away from uh, having a, a, a YUM or RDF, a, a, a YUM or DNF kind of repo. Um, let's see. Uh, so They've also gone through and um, helped Docker become more integrated with FE Linux and uh, System D. Um, uh, Atomic App and um, Nucule are um, essentially uh, configuration uh, pieces uh, similar to what uh, Google did with Pods. Um, these are sort of more written up, I guess. Um, and uh, like I said uh, earlier, uh, Atomic and sen several of the applications are uh, uh, focusing on putting together containers so that your build process um, is leveraged, that you have a portfolio of uh, images to work from. Um, and there are a variety of tools uh, from, uh, I think one is called Builda. Well, um, it is one of their focuses so that uh, you can put together a constellation of uh, containers that represent a, uh, a service or a system, much the way Google focuses on pods. Um, that is the gist of the uh, vision. Online, you'll notice that this is um, another creation of Lynette Potterings. So basically, it's a kernel with system D and containers. That's leaving a lot out. but. Um, there are two online uh, pieces where he has gone in and talked about uh, what he wants to create in terms of uh, uh, a systems architecture. Um, so uh, zeropointer.net, the blog, has uh, a variety of uh, entries there. It's where he started uh, blogging on a variety of things, basically explaining system D. Um, and a variety of other things. Um, these two pieces are on uh, what he envisions as uh, a uh, stable and secure uh, foundation for containers. Um, the uh, third uh, URL there is uh, the official Fedora project write-up on uh, the modular modularization of which Project Atomic is a part of. There are other aspects. 
and this has been an ongoing effort at Red Hat that um, has consolidated into this area. They go through and outline some of the history in terms of uh, its uh, development. And here is the URL for the project. It's projectatomic.io. Um, really surprised they didn't just go for project.atomic. But um, anyways, uh, this is this where you'd want to go and to get started. There's uh, a good number of write-ups, how to deploy in a variety of situations. Um, you can download a variety of uh, images and uh, all sorts of uh, approaches. To, uh, uh, so if you want to set up a, um, a, uh, a vagrant instance to check it out, you can do that. Um, but that is uh, probably the best place to, to look out uh, some of the foundations. Um, this is my attempt at graphics. And uh, uh, this, believe it or not, is uh, one way of looking at uh, the upgrading and deploying of uh, systems uh, as we go through it today. On the left-hand side, you have the kernel, a couple kernel modules. You incrementally increase through. Um, and then on the right-hand side, I mean, the, yeah, the, your right-hand side, you have, uh, for example, uh, services, NTP, uh, LDAP, um, web services that uh, incrementally approach, uh, you know, it get bigger, they rotate, they get a little different. But um, essentially, you have uh, kind of these two areas that are kind of growing along. I try putting in a mapping of dependencies that might indicate what would happen, uh, what would happen, you know, if you were trying to keep everything all balanced and um, that looked even worse. Um, the whole point is that it, you've got all these things uh, proceeding on their own uh, independent uh, fashion, but in a common space. And so essentially, you end up I either with uh, legacy systems that you can't do anything with because you've fallen off the upgrade chain, or um, there's some dependency that you're, you can't migrate from, um, or uh, some piece of critical software it, in the node world. There's some uh, NPM deployment uh, has been abandoned by the original author, and you have no idea where the follow-on piece is. So essentially, you've got all these things kind of a progressing as far as they can go, and then they get stuck. Um, Atomic, and I apologize, the graphic has um, kind of fallen off the right-hand side there, is essentially a, a, you get two I images of your operating system. It's a blue-green deployment. So when you upgrade uh, Atomic from one uh, distribution to the next, it's not a question of uh, whether you're going from door 26 to 27 or 28. You are going from the one you're currently on is going to be demoted into the backup position, and they're going to give you a new one, and that is the whole operating system. There might be, see little squares there, um, a few things that you can layer in. So, for example, the um, distribution of Project Atomic does not include kernel modules for SysDig. You can layer those on, and once you layer those on, they will be included in any um, updates to your version of Atomic, uh, uh, the, your Atomic host. So there's that. And then on the far right side, the part that's uh, very much clipped are all your containers. There are no other applications. Anything else that you do on that system is a container. And it can be put there um, and moved around like any other containers. You're managing those through the Kubernetes world. Um, which in uh, Fedora is uh, the cockpit web uh, interface. So um, essentially, that is, is the difference. You've got a blue-green uh, deployment uh, of uh, your atomic host. Uh, if, your, if the new distribution comes in and uh, doesn't run, it crashes, uh, atomic will automatically go back and run the known good operating system. 
but you're not going to be going in there and um, updating a kernel module or updating uh, uh, the latest Docker uh, uh, daemon. That all happens at uh, that all happens per before you get the distribution. That's updated in the newest uh, uh, deployment of atomic of the atomic host. Um, with the change from Fedora 25 to 26, um, they have gone to a single version. Um, so the rest of Fedora, the desktop, the server might be doing Fedora 26, Fedora 27, whatever. The uh, Project Atomic is just doing Project Atomic. It doesn't have a Fedora 25. The labels will still indicate what Fedora you're on, but Whenever you go to Project Atomic, there's just one distribution. There's no um, moving from one distribution to another. You're just upgrading the distribution you have to the most recent. So that is one of the big changes uh, in um, Project Atomic. Um, another big change is, of course, uh, this is a very stateless friendly deployment approach. Um, so you've got containers. Uh, I don't know how long you want to depend upon them running, but uh, the best design probably includes a stateless approach to um, your deployments of services. So um, when you're going to deploy a, a project atomic onto uh, a system, maybe you want to check it out. Uh, there's a variety of opportunities. Like I said, you've got an ISO that you can put on a USB and then uh, stick that in a machine, boot from it, um, and run through the Anaconda install. Um, there's, you can do a Pixie boot with kickstarts. There are QCOW images. There's Vagrant, DigitalOcean, and AWS have uh, versions that you can deploy on their cloud. Um, that is getting a little bit redundant because why not use their uh, Kubernetes uh, enabled uh, container system. Um, probably why uh, Google Cloud isn't isn't mentioned. Um, but uh, running a virtual private server in order to run Atomic Host is um, well, you can do it. Um, it's probably a little bit of overkill. Um, Okay, uh, if you install Project Atomic on hardware directly in onto a machine, uh, it's going to have uh, two partitions, and uh, essentially you've got 300 meg for your boot partition and about 6 gig for uh, your uh, Project uh, Atomic uh, host. Uh, that is approximately double what you would think you would need, but... Um, if you have to rebase and uh, go ahead and do a complete reinstall of the operating system in order to migrate it, you're going to want that little extra headroom. Um, the rest of your drive is uh, it's all formatted LVM. And if you've got a couple hundred gig left over, that's where your containers are going to go. And uh, uh, Project Atomic deploys containers, Docker containers, and soon to be Rocket containers directly onto the LVM. So uh, minimal uh, amount of uh, hassle, pretty straightforward. Okay, once you do get it installed, uh, you're going to want to update it. And uh, this command is something you'll run um, once every three weeks or so because Fedora comes out with a new uh, uh, issuance of uh, the Atomic Host. And it's essentially Atomic Host upgrade reboot and that's it it'll go out it'll pull down the latest version it'll make it your green it'll demote the one you've got going right now into your blue and the one that's blue it'll just forget about so um, the operating system might be able to handle more than two images of a kernel project atomic doesn't care there's only two on the box that it knows about and one was working when you got there in the morning and if you install an upgrade to one that doesn't work, it will go back to it. Um, but essentially, uh, this command is something that 
uh, you can set up. And you can um, set this up to uh, well, uh, Ansible or uh, Puppet or CF Engine or any number of systems can do that. Um, like I mentioned at the very beginning, the core uh, aspect of this is RPM OS tree. Uh, this replaces DNF, YUM, uh, any other kind of package management, any other kind of uh, system migration uh, services. Uh, this is the immutable. It manages uh, the, the systems that are deployed in Atomic Host. And um, it basically has uh, four commands. So you can look at the status. You can do an upgrade, like we just mentioned. Um, you can roll back. So if you don't like what you got, you can go back to what you knew worked. Um, and then you can deploy a particular version. Um, this is why you want that extra headspace, because it's holding a lot more uh, on your uh, Fedora uh, atomic partition. And um, basically, those are the four big ones for managing the operating system, uh, atomic host. There are, uh, you have the ability to layer in additional apps. So um, uh, if you wanted to add, say, uh, the kernel module for Sysdig, or you wanted to run Prometheus, or you wanted to, um, I don't know, add something to the very basic foundation that is Atomic Host. You would do that with uh, RPM OS tree install and then the package name. This will pull out of uh, the uh, typical Fedora repositories. But what happens is that it adds it to your project Atomic uh, uh, manifest so that when you do a, a an upgrade, or uh, when you do a rollback, the uh, this is included, so it sort of adds to the bundle. Um, it is uh, the safety valve. There are other ways to uh, further commit uh, uh, design on the OS uh, on the Atomic Host. Um, you can unlock the uh, RPM uh, OS tree. So you can set it up so you can add your own to it if you were going to be doing some publishing. That is pretty much what Red Hat and the Fedora people are doing. Um, if you want to add um, something to it, maybe you want to include LibreSSL, uh, you would do it this way. And this uh, just lets you add it to the uh, OS, your version of the um, Atomic Host and uh, it will keep up with all of your upgrades as they are issued uh, from Fedora. Um, so you've got the install package, and then you've got the uninstall package. Um, and so like I, these uh, upgrades, rebases, and deploys, it survives those, which is sort of what I was getting to. Other, uh, well, let's look at the, the rebasing. Um, for example, um, this used to be more important because as you were going from uh, Fedora 24 to Fedora 25, you had to rebase the atomic host uh, from the 24 tree to the 25 tree. But with 26, they um, have gone and basically adopted a singular base. It's just going to move ahead. The label might change it whenever you would deploy an atomic host that is a new version of Fedora, but it's still that one base. Um, this is how you get some uh, uh, flexibility. So if you uh, get a, uh, an atomic host and you have to put it through the QA system um, so that it gets vetted, um, and by the time that gets turned around, maybe you've gotten uh, a few more uh, cycles into Atomic Host, you can go back and deploy the one that you know y that your institution uh, knows is good. So you can pick that way. Um, you can also move uh, between uh, parts of the uh, deploy. So you can move from testing to, this is essentially going from Rawhide 
to uh, uh, other, um, let's see, there's rawhide, there's a stable, and then there's the next one. Um, but essentially, you can move to other uh, distributions. So if Fedora comes out with uh, a testing that you want to get because it's got something that fixes a bug for you, you can rebase from the uh, uh, standard atomic host out to a testing and updates. So it's um, essentially a way of moving around the uh, uh, distribution tree of uh, the OS. There are more. Um, if you uh, do a man on RPM OS tree, they will show you a variety of others. Um, you can control things like uh, whether you want to set up an init RAM FS or um, other more detail-oriented aspects of the deployment or running of uh, the atomic host. One thing to look for is anything labeled uh, RPM OS tree EX, that stands for experimental. That means the, uh, the API hasn't necessarily settled, may not work, may not be safe, they don't know, but it's there, you can play with it. And um, just uh, in one of the um, things to keep in mind is uh, the whole command uh, structure that comes with Atomic Host is based on the command Atomic. And for uh, that covers uh, anything you might want to do with containers or the host system. Anything that is done with the prefix Atomic Host is simply an alias for uh, RPM OS tree. And so uh, essentially, uh, Atomic Host is the superset of commands, and RPM OS tree are the ones that are focused on the host, uh, the Atomic Host that you're running. Um, if you run uh, the status command, this is what it looks like, uh, except for the big yellow block. Um, you get the state. Uh, the atomic uh, host uh, basically collects things that it needs to do if you're doing an update or something. And uh, it holds it until you cycle power on it so that um, you may have some actions that you have uh, set up to uh, to do maybe you're going to um, layer in uh, an application or a new version of uh, NTP or something um, that uh, changes the uh, atomic host uh, system that will be staged and the um, that line up there will say pending which essentially identifies that there are changes of pending um, these are the two uh, atomic hosts that are on your uh, my system it's since been upgraded but um, essentially uh, the uh, green OS is the top one with the dot um, it's version 26.120 and the one that uh, uh, was before that is 26.101 I think the current one is 26.140 or something um, but essentially you you have an AB uh, system if uh, the uh, one that is on the top was crashes and uh, can't be rebooted uh, atomic will go with the other one you can also pick to go with the other one if for example you upgrade atomic and then all your containers crash which would be bad so um, that is essentially what you're looking at in terms of an operating system Okay, one of the reasons to run op, uh, Atomic Host is because you want to create a uh, lot of containers, or some containers, or a few containers. And um, you're going to manage those uh, most easily by uh, running a Cockpit. It's a uh, uh, basically a web front end, uh, runs on, I think, port 9090, um, and it's uh, basically... Uh, part of the Kubernetes universe. So um, your first option, if you get Atomic Host installed, that's it, you're done. If you have Cockpit running on any other system, you can point it at the one you just installed 
it has all the hooks necessary so that you can manage all the containers on that system from the cockpit that you used. You know, if you have cockpit on your laptop and you set up a server or a VPS or something, um, you don't need to make any changes. It's got all of the hooks so that you can run it from your current version of cockpit. You can add it to the dashboard. Um, that's probably the easiest way to deal with it. Um, uh, but there, there are other options. Um, the other option is to create a container and run uh, cockpit the web server from it. And that uh, it connects back to the atomic host that it's running on. This is for a uh, atomic host local access only. Um, and basically you start, right now the atomic command uh, doesn't really handle proxies very well. So the way around that is you use the Docker command, you tell it about the proxies, you go out and you download the container, it's called cockpit slash WS, and basically um, you have to give it uh, your environment uh, in uh, Docker services D, HTTP proxy, and then you can tell it, you know, for example, here's an HTTP proxy uh, environmental command. Uh, you can tell it HTTPS. You can tell it uh, what not to use a proxy on. So, for example, if you have a, uh, a artifactory or Nexus or uh, pulp uh, instance on your uh, internal network that has your Docker images, you can tell uh, Docker not to use a proxy when approaching it. And so, basically, um, you get the container that you're going to use to deploy cockpit on your atomic host by telling Docker to figure out how to deal with the proxy. Um, you get, uh, it'll check that by going and doing a system control show property environment uh, Docker and then you pull it. Uh, and uh, hopefully the folks at Atomic will um, be upgrading their ability to handle modestly complicated network topography. Um, and then you can go ahead and use the atomic command uh, to set up the container running cockpit and basically atomic install the container name. Um, the big yellow thing there is just my note. Bas this is a special container. It um, has privileges running on the system that it's running. So it hooks into the hooks that are in Atomic host to display uh, all of the container information that are needed. Um, so this has to happen locally on the Atomic host that you want to run to manage the containers on. But essentially, um, from here on out, you just uh, you run it. Um, you edit the uh, the uh, cockpit ws.service.systemd. Um, you uh, tell it to daemon reload. Uh, you enable the cockpit service, then you start the cockpit service. The um, systemd service looks like this. Um, it's a cockpit ws.service. You can name it whatever you want, but this is uh, memorable. And you have a unit. Um, it requires, it runs after the service name. Uh, it's uh, Restart on failure, give it 10, uh, 10 shots at that. Um, you've got the exec start, and I'm not going to be able to walk that all out. But essentially, if you walk the exec start line out, it will um, basically identify which container it loads, and you're essentially identifying a container as a service to system D. Um, and then there's uh, Finally, the install section, and it's basically units. And then once you've done that, you are in a position to um, look at the containers uh, through cockpit. You can explore how uh, atomic the atomic host works. But you don't have to go through that if you want to look at some of the um, 
commands that are available to you from uh, RPM OS tree to uh, Atomic. Um, basically, you can install Atomic on your current uh, system, assuming that it's running Red Hat or CentOS or Fedora. And you can look at the commands there. Um, it essentially uh, will install. It won't really be able to do much, but um, you'll be able to uh, look at the uh, configurations and, and work with it in terms of the, um, uh, the man page and the commands. Um, one of the things is that, that can be quite handy is you now have access to the RPM OS tree uh, man page. Oddly enough, on Atomic Host, it is optimized so there is no man facilities. It's not made for human contact, and you're not going to be debugging anything, you know, shelled into the Atomic Host. But if you want to look at the man page, uh, you can just, you know, install it on your server, and the man page is there, and you can uh, look at it, and um, it's a well done. Uh, fully explained uh, approach to the system. Um, one nice thing, if you have uh, some old hardware, all of this Balderall does not require virtualized CPUs. So if you've got an old Atom CPU from uh, Intel, and I'm sure that's not where they got the inspiration, uh, you can run this. Uh, you can run this on if you're very patient on very old hardware. Um, but it doesn't require CPU virtualization. It's a container. And essentially, um, it is easy to uh, explore. It's very lightweight on uh, the process. Um, and uh, you'll be able to install a large number of containers in a relatively simple system. So um, that's essentially the presentation. Any questions? Any of you would like to try Atomic Host? It's a nice, uh, it's a nice place to play with containers. And one of the things that um, that Project Atomic is doing is looking at uh, tools that are useful in building. Uh, container images, and uh, this allows you to um, get some of the ideas of how you would manage uh, essentially a statelessly deployed uh, set of services, serverless deployments, if you will. But uh, if, uh, well, I hope you give it a try. I'll, uh, I'll ask a question. Okay. Um, you said that you have a LVM volume to run your Docker images yeah. as their storage. Do you know if that is configurable? Can you use other file systems, uh, raw disk, you know, other, yeah. other things like that? There are a variety of um, backend storage uh, choices. The um, if you just get the ISO on a, a USB stick, it takes the drive that you've shown it, makes it an LVM, and then just installs two partitions, uh, one for boot, one for uh, the um, Fedora Atomic. And so if you have other storage opportunities, you can do that. Um, you're probably not going to use ButterFS, um, but yes. I was just going to mention that <coughs> um, you can run on raw disk, you can run on NFS, you can run on iSCSI uh, targets. Yeah, it's cool. um, It's actually fine with just about everything that Linux can handle. Cool. Docker is not fine with Device Mapper and LVM, which is why I ask. That's part of what Project Atomic. Yeah, the on. version on Project Atomic is pretty good with it. The. Um, they are, Project Atomic is based on the um, standardized container APIs, so you don't have to stick with Docker uh, 
the the pending announcement, I think, is along the lines of <laughs> Rocket from CoreOS is going to be available. And uh, I think that um, some of the other, uh, what is it, LCX or LXC uh, containers. But it's, um, it's focused on the um, standard. It came out of uh, what um, OpenShift, is it? That was doing, but so it uh, can handle. Yeah. I don't think it can handle ZFS, but uh, it it can handle uh, lots of different storage, and it doesn't take up lots of room. So, um, anything else? Yeah. Uh, how does it detect failure? You said that it was more or less redundant and had two images. Is it a failure to boot that switches it, or is it actually monitoring itself with a, I don't know, watchdog timer type function internally? And if it, if it fails, does it reboot and switch over to the other OS? Or you know, is my understand my understanding is that if the uh, green version of Coro of um, Atomic uh, crashes while it's booting up, it will mark that as uh, bad and boot the one that it knew was good. So only at boot then? Yeah. Not while it's running. Yeah. The uh, second opportunity to notice failure is when your containers don't work. But the interface between uh, the containers and the OS are, is, um, well, it's supposed to be very well known and stable. Okay. Thank you.